Just throw it at me a bit and we'll just do an intro and then we'll rock and roll. You got it. We're away, KD. Take us in. Hey, Take us we in, are buddy. back with Under the Wire. I'm Kevin Donahue and I'm joined here, of course, from beautiful Singapore with David Watson, my fearless co-host who has his tea. He's ready to go. I'm sure that's some kind of immunity boosting tea. Oh, it as is. As well. It's a Spartan tea, Katie. Yeah, how things it's over Spartan there, man? Yeah, things are pretty good here, you know. Um, considering uh, I feel pretty lucky that um, I can still get enough groceries here. And, you know, uh, I can go out of my house. Uh, as always, the weather is exactly 32 degrees Celsius every single day, 365 days a year. So uh, that helps. And, um, you know... Uh, yeah, but, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things, KD, you know, it's like things change in this, uh, current environment in, you know, half a day. So, you know, just doing, doing everything we can, working hard, talking to a lot of Spartans and, um, feeling fortunate to be part of the community, buddy. Yeah. Every day we should, uh, count our blessings and think about at least one good thing that happened today. I had a great day working with a lot of my clients and got a great workout in myself. But let me ask you, you know, yeah. uh, yesterday, NBA Commissioner David Silver was speaking on a big ESPN show, and he was talking about three possible scenarios for bringing back play to the NBA. Scenario number one was obviously the best one with all the athletes and all the fans. Plan B was just the athletes playing for a TV audience. But he also had kind of a plan C that maybe they would bring everybody back, athletes-wise, that is, for kind of like a charity game. And it started getting me thinking, you know what, what is some way that we could possibly engage the global Spartan community in something fun and something competitive? And I wanted to throw that out to you, but I also wanted to throw it out to the audience now that is watching. What do you think are some great ideas? But David, of course, I had to start with you. You're our I'll fearless leader, my man. <laughs> I appreciate, appreciate that. Well, you know, Couple of, here's a couple of comments first, right? Let me give you a couple of comments. Um, Adam Silver, when he made the, when he made the call, um, I think uh, many people agree that that helped topple a lot of sports. It actually helped set the tone, I think, not just for sports, but for you know organisations in general, especially in the United States. You know, people are going to turn around and people say, hey. The NBA is off the cards um, indefinitely. This thing's serious. And then, you know, after we saw the NBA decision within, you know, hours, we saw multiple other decisions made, not only, again, in sports, but across many industries. Now, the interesting thing is, sports fans, that the AFL, the Australian Football League, is playing games without spectators and so is right? And so is the NRL, the, the uh, rugby in Australia. So if you want to watch sports, Australian sports is where it's at. And, you know, I'm a big AFL fan. So, you know, you want to get a taste of Aussie football, now's the time. But, you know, other than getting, a, a you know, more, you know, 300 million Americans involved in uh, Australian rules football, which would be fantastic. Um, I, 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 scratch my head. I scratch my head a little bit, KD. I scratch my head because they're, they're playing games with our spectators. Now, I get it that there was a, an, an infection amongst uh, the NBA players and then that kind of, you know, exacerbated and more players got sick. Um, and the, the threat to a, a league like that with that sort of value of sponsorship and, and media and all that other stuff is huge. You know, if, you, if the players can't play, they're protecting their assets. I get it. So I'm just scratching my head to figure out, you know, who's made the right call here. I'm not. I'm still not sure, and I think everybody's still debating it. Did the NBA come out too prematurely, right? Or, you know, is the is the AFL in Australia being um, irresponsible by playing games um, without the spectators? Um, I don't know. I got I got to think about it. But I wanted to sort of like, you know, set up our conversation a little bit here with with what other sports leagues are doing around the world. Now, I I thought about this, right? Like. I would love to see at least elite Spartan races happen uh, on their own, you know, um, at a course somewhere. And we all, you know, we get some cameras out there 
and we compete. US National Series continues and and we watch it. Now, I don't know. That, by the way, it's extremely expensive to try and do something like that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we don't have the uh, the firepower of uh, some of the other sports leagues, KD, but... But, you know, I'd love to see that the U.S. National Series continue in maybe in a short course format. Remember back at Big Bear when uh, when we got the we got that snow last year and we got all of that course, rain. Short the course and we did two laps to that epic course. And uh, we have a couple of a um, uh, guy named Kenny Wade. He He's one of our spectators. He's one of our Spartans. And he was talking about maybe some kind of virtual challenge that would be cool. But, you know, you talked about some firepower. We got somebody coming on with us real soon here who's got some firepower of her own. And we're going to be joined very shortly by two-time world champion and defending U.S. National Series champion Lindsay Webster. And we're going to be talking everything from her time growing up in Canada to maple syrup to baking to what Ryan Atkins is actually like <laughs> at home. So, it's going to be a great interview. We're going to see her really, really soon. So I'm checking yeah. out some of the um, the messages that we got already. Um, Kenny Wade's in there already. He's in here a lot, so thanks for the messages, Kenny. Elite Spartans would be so intense on a, a kind of a short court. And like you were hey, talking Kenny. about. Hey, Kenny, wouldn't that so be – I think you already got people's minds going on there, Mr. Watson. I was going to say, Kenny, wouldn't that just be wicked, man? Like – Imagine that, eh? Like, you know, talk about pumping up the sport. Like, everyone has to watch Spartan OCR. You know, I'm thinking, like, we get one of the trailers with all the obstacles. Maybe we take it up to Vermont, you know, put it out on Joe's farm up there, set up a bit of a, you know, you know, a, a short course. Maybe it's like a K. We do some loops. It'd be, it'd be amazing. And desperate times, desperate times. Uh, yeah, exactly. And if you've ever been, if anybody's ever been to Joe's farm in Pittsfield, he has this mountain that the death racers built a staircase all the way to the top. And that's always been a joke about the death race is it's just a way to get people to do Joe's labor at his house for free. But they built this beautiful <laughs> staircase all the way to the top of the mountain and it has obstacles already set up along the way. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> stair that Joe's got. I don't think it's a joke. I don't. I don't think it's a joke. I mean, <laughs> clearly, getting people to do stuff. For, no. <laughs> How else do you build a staircase up a mountain? Um, where's well, where's someone where's else who's really good at doing mountains is here with us now, and she's just about to join us. David, could you do the introductions for Lindsay Webster? I certainly can. I just hope. I just hope Anthony backstage there, buddy. You ready? You ready to get Lindsay on? I can see she's ready to rock and roll. All right, so. Probably, you know, not probably. I, I am going to go flat and say the greatest female OCR athlete um, of all time. I think Lindsay Webster is just absolutely incredible. Um, she is just unbreakable on the course and off the course. One of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, hailing from Canada, but well integrated in the United States. Lindsay Webster's with us. Lindsay, how do we get you on the camera right now? I, I want to start talking. You've got so many questions. Anthony is oh, there. You go. There's <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty nice after all those compliments, David. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, Lindsay. Where are you right now? I'm at home in Quebec, uh, missing you guys because, I mean, Spartan's like my second family and now with the next race being uh, postponed, I feel like I'm used to seeing you guys every six weeks or something like that and now it's going to be months and it's strange. It feels weird. Miss you guys. Miss you too. And now, Lindsay, speaking of family, you're you're at home in your house in Quebec. It's It's absolutely beautiful and congratulations on moving in and you know, everybody knows that you're, you know, a two-time world champion. Like, I mean, we could go on and on about the accolades that you've accomplished from North American regional championships to national series championships, all multiple. But I wanted to ask you, you know what? You're also, at the end of the day, you're, you're a wife. You know, you're a homeowner. You're Sunto's mama. How do you balance everything that you do with OCR racing, <clears throat> pardon me, racing at the top of the world, at the top of your game, 
but also balancing all these other responsibilities in such a life you have. I mean, sometimes it's difficult because I have a lot of hobbies um, that I love to do, and a lot of them involve most athletes, uh, especially professional athletes, aren't very good at things still. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, sometimes balance is difficult, particularly in the summer when we're training hardest and, uh, you know, the veggie garden growing and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I sort of promise myself, uh, you know, I'll only do a couple hours a day of manual labor on top of my training so I can make sure I maximize on recovery and uh, yeah and then it sort of just makes me enjoy those things even more um, enjoy really enjoy my time at home because uh, yeah we're away a lot so now speaking of manual labor and, and David I know like you're in Singapore and I, I don't know how much of this you actually have but I mean you are just getting into the maple syrup industry. Tell us how you got started with that. Yeah, so it was actually Ryan, Ryan Atkins, uh, who's my husband and also um, a professional Spartan racer. There's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there know. Um, and so basically, our new house here is on um, what's called a co-op. So we own two acres of land, but then there's. 42 acres that are shared amongst these um, six other houses. And so basically we share different things like a, a fruit tree orchard and chickens and things like this that um, we sort of all divide the labor and reap the benefits of. And so when we moved in, Ryan said, I'd really like to do maple syrup. And uh, one of our neighbors had actually done it before. So he sort of got us started and everybody was game and so now we're all making maple syrup together but oh my gosh let me tell you it is a lot of work <laughs> like, like, how, how much work, is involved, how much work is involved in that Lindsay like what have you actually got to do to, to, like I mean obviously you tap you tap the tree right you stick the spigot in and you mm -hmm. go out you unplug it but like uh, that's what I've seen on TV and on cartoons. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like yeah. Looney cartoons and stuff. Like, Tell us the real deal. <laughs> I think it's quite a bit easier when you have a commercial setup. So a lot of people will see um, when there's maple syrup farm, there's uh, these tubes that go kind of from tree to tree. And uh, they basically feed into a giant barrel. But we're doing it the old school way where you have to go around from tree to tree and collect the sap in the buckets and pour it into like a big bucket, which is the same size as the ones actually that we carry during Spartan races. Um, <clears throat> and so once the bucket's yeah. full, it's quite heavy because it's literally full to the brim of maple water. Um, and so I've been using it actually as my carries practice because I'll like stick the lid on and then I'll try and put it up on my shoulder and I'll just like run back um, with it. And then we pour all of that, all of those basically into, um, the thing that we boil down all the maple syrup in but i mean for you're me the normally, only a couple in the world that could turn maple syrup into an actual workout and have it be healthy that's incredible <laughs> um, because we're boiling it on what's essentially a giant wood stove every single day we're spending hours just chopping wood to feed this thing and so for the last like two weeks i've been considering wood chopping to be my core workout um because like I spend so much energy doing that that I haven't actually had energy to do my proper strength workouts. But this is the good thing about Spartan racing is that, I mean, I think if I did a different sport, I couldn't get away with this. But with Spartan racing, it's literally like basically labor that translates so well into your daily life. And that's the thing I love about training for this sport is that pretty much anything that you can do, that you do, you can consider training for races. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> How well, shopping. Fact as well, is you're not the first Spartan world champion to be a maple syrup farmer or connoisseur. Claude Goodbow, who was our 2012 and 2014 ladies world champion, her and her husband, Marco, they work on yeah. a, in, in, in Quebec outside of Toronto, um, excuse me, outside of Montreal, they have a kind of maple syrup industry and they actually do their own canning. So it's kind of like in the Spartan blood in Canada, like winning <laughs> world championships and dabbling in maple syrup. 
Yeah, I think that's so cool. So I think they actually live only about an hour and a half from us. And like in the United States, how Vermont is very much known sort of for maple syrup. I think here in Canada, it's Quebec. Um, but I think that they must own a much like bigger sort of commercial setup than we do because <laughs> ours is so we just make enough to feed out like us and our neighbors and a couple of our friends. Hey, Lindsay. Oh, I got one more question. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. I was just going to just a quick one. Um, unless it was maple syrup related, KD, I just wanted to ask you, Lindsay. There's rumors. There's rumors that you're 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 a French speaker now, or you always were a French speaker. What, what's what's I'm, going on there? Can you can you, can you yeah, jazz, jazz no, a little bit? Ryan has always been a French speaker. He's completely bilingual. Um, and for me, I did grade seven and eight in French immersion school, but since then, I haven't really practiced and. I mean, for me, it's kind of a special thing because uh, Canada calls themselves bilingual, but actually it's a pretty small percentage of the province that actually speaks both French and English. And so um, I think it's it's been pretty fun to learn. And I have, I mean, I think the brain is like the body, like I have good days and bad days with it. And when it's a good day, I'll practice really hard and train my... I can see what's coming, KD. I can see what's coming. Lindsay at the spear throw, swearing in French at the referees. It's going to be a whole new, a whole new thing when we get back into this. I can't wait. Hey, at least you know what? Maybe we can get French Mima and Mrs. Butterworth's out there to have a maple syrup contest with her as well. Who would be the better maple syrup maker? You, Mrs. Butterworth, or Aunt Jemima? That's another. That's another question you got to throw out to the crowd. Aunt Jemima doesn't even make real maple syrup, though, does she? So I feel like she's like out of the running. I don't even know what you're well, talking about. So just like this is clearly. A <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got to be in America, but Lindsay, you know what? Maple syrup isn't the only kind of food making you're into. You're also a fantastic baker. You love to bake, and I wanted to ask you: Have you ever thought of kind of making or marketing your own energy bar? And no, if you did, you know what, what would that be called it? and what would be in it? Ooh, that's a really maple good syrup. question. <laughs> it's, it's a maple syrup bar. <laughs> you don't have much else, do you? What else is in your <laughs> It's like you're a grocery store right now. <laughs> yeah, there would be maple syrup, definitely. Um, probably some sort of nut butter. Like, I'm a really big fan of almond butter. And some sort of natural grain, like... I. I probably use rice because it's easier to digest them. Hey, well, oh, on that note, yeah. Lindsay. On that note, Lindsay. What, what? Let's get let's get into the sport a little bit. Let's talk sport. Um, okay. on the, in terms of sport nutrition, generally, I, I would think on a on a sprint or super, you're not taking any nutrition out on the course with you. Maybe for the super, but uh, if you do and you and you're willing to talk about it. How do you approach nutrition for a race? What does your eating look like? Say twenty four hours before a race during the race yeah. and after the race? What, how does that work for you? That's a great question. Um, actually, a lot of people ask me that question. And I'll start this off by just saying, I think that's something that's very based on the person. I know people who can just do a 24 hour race and only eat gels. Um, but for me, I can't do that. And how I eat during you know, a race is different than how Ryan eats during a race um, and some of my competitors. So. I think I'll start by just saying that um, people should just spend time practicing this and figure out what works for them. But yeah, for me during a sprint, I won't eat anything. During a super, I'll probably have just one or two gels and I usually eat honey stinger gels or maple syrup gels, funnily enough. Funnily, that's not really weird, but um, <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's longer than about six hours then I start eating more real nutrition um, which basically for me consists of rice that I make beforehand. Um, I do sort of work with the nutritionist and he suggested, um, I shared this before actually on social media but um, this is also what we eat for breakfast before races and I'll eat it during races if they're over eight hours so it's basically just cooked white basmati rice with uh, some almond butter or whatever nut butter mixed in, um, a little bit of salt for replacing your sodium stores, and then coconut oil. So basically it's just healthy fats um, that'll feed your body after it burns off the carbs from the rice, and then, yeah, sodium. 
that's it. Is that something that you made for Ryan on his quest to go across that ice road in Canada recently? No, um, he requested granola from me because apparently you can't buy it up there. So yeah, um, but he didn't bring a lot outside of, um, what did he bring with him? I guess mostly dehydrated meals. We should give a little background to that, AKD. Um, uh, Lindsay's, Lindsay's been at home for, how long now, Lindsay? How long? How long's Ryan been away? It's been a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, two uh, weeks. We do back home, so yeah, yeah. I'm Lindsay really excited David, to come home. I, yeah, I was Go able on. to find some video of what Lindsay was doing while Atkins was out on his, on his trek, and Lindsay had a little bit of party. This is not confirmed, Lindsay. Could you confirm if this was you partying when Ryan was out on his bike ride? Can't see it. Was that you? Wait, I can't see what you're. Um... I see what you said. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. is that you, Miracle and Aaron Newell dancing when run? Yeah, it is. It is confirmed. <laughs> I think my dance moves are better than that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Wasn't that to you guys as well? Sorry, Nicole. Well, one of them was Aaron Newell. But it was two girls. So I think it was you, Nicole, and Aaron, you know, dancing away, which was fine because it was within the guidelines of social distancing. There was only three of you. So, you know, thank you for doing that. Um, so Ryan, Ryan has gotten back. And, you know, a lot of, you know, you are his wife, you're his best friend, you're his training partner. What is Ryan like at home? <laughs> He's messy. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's like so neat there in the background. Everything looks really neat and tidy. So as soon as Ryan walks in, what there's going to be like, there's going to be like right steel pad on the floor. There's going to be melting snow and dirt. The bikes. There will be gear. Yeah, there's going to be gear everywhere for sure. But um, no, Ryan. So you're saying um, that. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Go. Sorry. Go. Ahead. Uh, Finish your talk. Um, I was just gonna say, Ryan. I think he balances me well because I'm. I mean, I'm a little bit of a neat freak, and I'm more of like a planner. And Ryan's really go with the flow. I mean, so he was just way up north, no cell reception, anything. Literally with like polar bears for the last two weeks. And um, by the time he finally got back into cell reception, I told him, I sent him a text saying, like, our race in Seattle has been canceled. The whole world is going, you know, a little bit upside down right now. And his, I thought he would have this crazy reaction because he literally had no idea about any of this. And he just found out yesterday. And his reaction was, oh, okay. <laughs> Can you believe it? Maybe, and maybe so Ryan is a... A super calm and collected guy, yeah. but um, He's really the two of guy. you. Yeah, he balances me. Yeah. I don't know. You and Ryan have always accepted, and you've accepted happily, the roles that you have as um, as leaders in the global community for obstacle course racing. You're you're kind of like, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of like our king and queen. What advice could you give to the audience at home in the Spartan community? To how to get through the crisis that we're dealing with, with with some joy, with some gratitude, and with some fun. Yeah, I mean, oh, like first and foremost, I feel like Spartan racing, which I'm assuming that everybody or most people at least who are watching, are Spartan racers. And I think the one thing that Spartan teaches you above anything else is just to be flexible and sort of to be adaptable and take whatever is thrown at you. Um, that's literally what we deal with during these races. And so now we're running a marathon. It's going to be a Spartan ultra beast and we're in it for, you know, the long haul. And I think that um, people just see, sort of need to apply that to their daily lives, you know, just like you do during a race. Um, and yeah, to stay positive and use this opportunity like a lot of people are home and not at work. And I understand that for people, especially with kids, it's going to be really difficult. But um, I would say just use this time to sort of make good memories and um, try and be your healthiest self 
maybe try and form some new habits. Like I sort of have a theory that people are going to be a lot healthier because they won't be eating out. They're going to be cooking at home. So maybe make a goal of, you know, trying out a new recipe that you've been wanting to try for a long time and sort of like really dial it in or, um, yeah, just spending time with family, things like that. Um, or use the time to do things that like truly make you happy. I mean, is there any special recipe that you want to share with the audience that maybe that you like cooking right now? Um, well, right now, actually, in the oven, I'll be here <laughs> in my kitchen, I'm baking sweet potatoes. And so tonight's dinner for me is going to be I'm going to make like Mexican burritos, basically. But instead of using meat, um, I'm just going to have sweet potatoes. What else do I have in there? There will be like beans, corn, um, some caramelized onions and peppers, and just basically like if you were to go to Chipotle or something like that, um, I'm having that for dinner. But, it's uh, awesome. Plant yeah, and I make well. loads of extra sweet potatoes so that I can snack on them um, kind of tomorrow and the next day. Because sweet love, that, um, love that, love uh, that, love <laughs> that plant-based nutrition, you know, that's a big one, you know, for... You know, just keeping healthy, right? You know, keeping it, yeah. keeping it uh, balanced, and you got you got the protein and the beans there. You got the starches and the sweet potatoes. It yeah. sounds like it sounds like a good move. Yeah. Right, I right. Do it yeah. only like probably two or three times a week, so yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, okay. well, we, we can't thank you enough for for coming on. We we really appreciated it. Um, I'm sure the entire Spartan community appreciated it. Um, thanks for the words of wisdom, for the laughs, and uh, we're looking forward to the day when you're able to can your own maple syrup and create your own bar so we could all taste it and go out and have a great run with it. <laughs> I'll bring them to a race someday. And in the meantime, uh, everybody be unbreakable. Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Have a great weekend. Definitely. KD, what's what's the plan? What's the plan, buddy? You're gonna gonna do a few workouts there at mom's house, get get a little meatloaf in on the weekend, you know. <laughs> you, you the meatloaf call yesterday was fantastic. Tonight it was uh some chili and some rice. Until like my uh my laptop has a hard drive cleaned up, I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be on my, my parents' la uh desktop. It's good as they yeah. live five miles from me, so it's always great Windows. to come see them. No wonder KD looks all jittery. He's on Windows 95. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. But, uh, you know, it was great talking to Lindsay about nutrition because Corinna Coffin just did a Spartan nutrition video that is up on the Spartan webpage, excuse me, on the Facebook page right now. And Ashley Heller has been doing some great stuff out in Idaho. So if you want a good follow, Follow Ashley Heller, and she's doing some fun things out in the wilderness in Idaho. And Mark Botris and his wife, Natalie Miano, just did, like, a killer one-hour jump rope workout that is also on the Spartan Facebook page. And Callie Schweikert did a really good 15-minute workout that's on there as well. So the Spartan athletes are definitely contributing to give us some content, to give us some workouts, to give us some great nutrition and and keep us plugging along as we get through this, my man. All right, brother. Well, we got to go. We got we got some more. We got some more content coming right up at eight o'clock. So, KD, it's been good to talk to you, buddy. I'm going to see you next week. See you next week, and next week we're going to have Ian Hosick on. So definitely join us then for Under the Wire. Can't wait. See you, everybody. Stay safe.